Okay. I'm Helen Stewart, and I'm a member of the American Association of University Women of Gates County, and we are working on a project through the eyes of women of Yates County. And I'm very privileged to be able to talk with Carlotta Crozier today, more known to me as Kirk. And um, she's one that I would really consider a native Penian person. So Kurt, shall we start by uh, telling us something about your local roots and sure. um, that well, kind of thing? My, the Froziers came from Hall. It was Hall's Corners then, and my mother came from Gorham. So we were all, my grandfather came here and had a business, Horton and Crozier Hardware on Elm Street. And then he opened the C.H. Crozier and Son Feed Mill down on Seneca Street, which is where the, oh, the farm implement place is. Farm and, supply. Yeah, farm supply is there. And my father joined him. My father and uncle went to Penyan Academy, too. They came down by train from the mall. And <laughs> where did they get off the train? Penyan. Right? I mean, where, where oh, was I the station? Oh, I think it was on... Uh, Elm Street there, you know, the oh. station there. And my father used to say, he played football. And I've got a picture somewhere of the 1908 football team. But they had to hitch a ride back to Halls. Nobody came to get them. And when they got there, the dad said, we had chores to do and homework to do. But that's what, if you wanted to play, that's what you did. Well, anyway, my father graduated two years at Cornell and joined my grandfather and C.H. Crozier and son around 1914 feed mill down there. And I was born in 1916, August 31st, at the Hatmaker Hospital. A lot of people don't know where that is. I don't. Can you tell us? It's uh, <laughs> on the end of East Main Street, going up towards the Wiggers apple barrel thing. On the end of East Main well, Street. Up, and it's an old house that sits back just before you get to the apple barrel place. And that was Miss Hatmaker, and she had a, best I could figure out, she just started a little place for women to go to have their babies. Like a birthing center. Yeah, sort of thing. So it was called the Hatmaker Hospital. And spent most of my time, well, we lived up on East Main Street, or, excuse me, North Main Street. Oh, the DeBolts and the Cicadas and all were around us, and we were kids, and one time went, down the creek, down back, and the hobos were there. And boy, Winnie DeBolt and I were next to their neighbor. And her mother thought that she was having lunch with me, my mother vice versa. Well, around 1.30, 2 o'clock, I heard my dad saying, Carana! And uh, here he was, and he was, I said, what are you doing with these men? He said, oh, we got talking with them, we ate with them out of the cans, waited in the creek, and we just had a great time. And he yanked us all home, and I said, why are you so angry with me? What did I do? Now, where did these hobos come? Did they come on the train, or where? Yeah, I guess so. They just appeared, and they appeared at the houses, too. Or I don't know. I would imagine four or five of them down there, and we talked with them, and so on, and things like that. That I didn't know why he was so mad. I didn't know I'd done anything. And I guess we lived up there for a while. So maybe I was a junior high. Oh, and I went in the junior high corn. Went down the woods somewhere and built a fire, roasted the corn and so on, but nobody cared. I mean it was we could have stopped and they'd have given it to us. But I don't know, just kids did things together rather than so they didn't have much TV of the dating, you know, or so on and so on. We'd get Louise Queen and they had Queen his laundry and we'd take her father's panel thing that he used the laundry there, he'd go to Cottage City to 10 cents a dance over there. We just, by the time we got up by the post office, the whole back end was filled with kids. And Where's Cottage City? Do you know all of that? On, on Canandaigua Lake. On Canandaigua yeah. Lake. And Mr. Queenan could never figure out Monday morning there never was any gas. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, things like that we did, which... But there wasn't know. drinking? No, no, not then, no. No, I did later on some, but not anything to... There was... We knew where they were. I mean, I you did. weren't in danger of... Um, oh, no. Oh, no. When you were driving oh, around no. with the kids. No, no. We just went over for 10 cents a dance. And, <laughs> uh, 
But we knew if you wanted to where you could get it. Mm -hmm. One man penned in, sold a bottle of gin for 50 cents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of the older ones would know who I mean, but I'm not, obviously not going to mm -hmm. say the name. But No, it was, it, it just, I don't know, it's a good town to grow up in. Yeah. A good town to come back to. Mm -hmm. Well, people say, why don't you stay down in Florida? I said, because this is really my home. Mm -hmm. But I'm delighted I sold my house. Really Some of the things, when I was a kid, we come out of the theater, it would be raining. We were kids, you know, and something like that. And the police car was parked over, which was Howlin' Wise then. It was Pinkney's Hardware. Oh. So we'd go over and we'd say, yeah, take us home, would you? Sure, get in, kids. And they'd take us home. It was pouring rain or something like that. And Bordwell's Drugstore, they were reading the building. They had a phone back there, and they never objected if we ran in. And, hey, can we use the phones for, you know, like that? And I remember the Bordwell Drugstore yeah. being there. And then, I don't know if this is pertinent or not, but Seward's Candy Store, Ice Cream Store, it's where the Emporium is uh -huh. now. Well, I was a real kid, and I had about six pennies or seven, and he had a penny counter there. And boy, I was picking, and he was helping me. A couple businessmen came in, and a few minutes they said, Hey, Seward, could we get a milkshake? Can't you see I'm helping a customer? <laughs> They probably bought five cents worth of or six pennies or something like that. But things like that, you know, you remember. And I don't know. I was just I was delighted to have been raised in this town. And uh, but it's well, I think you've made the town proud, also. Well, I don't know about that, but it just everybody you were helping everybody. You know, it wasn't an old Mike Moses. You know, he could barely read, but he was one of the best policemen there was in this town. My dad was on the village board and he said, if you ever want to know what was going on, I asked Mike. <laughs> and he always, he always called everybody Jack and he'd see you in the street, hey Jack, I got the match, you got the cigarette? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he used to spend his time at the Kilka restaurant, Barton and Bernini's had it then. And, well, they're all those, I don't know, just, it's are all gone now. And, well, keep the restaurant still there. It's yeah, nice. but I mean the people yes. and so on. And in fact, <coughs> Donna Queenan called her as her birthday yesterday. I know it's Queenan's daughter. She's an actress up in Canada. And I don't know. We just we just had such good times and the country club and so on. Mm -hmm. Mary Carey up there and back when I was little. But I guess, I don't know, I guess I just think, well, like Dr. Bob Jensen brought his family here. He wanted them all raised in a, in a small community. And I don't know, I just because I feel privileged to have been raised here. Can we see I, some I of it? Okay. I had a good time in high school. I really did. And I want to ask you some more about your basketball. Did you play other schools? Oh yes, we played Seneca Falls. We were the preliminaries to the boys game. Now see, that's what happened with me too, but then they did away, they must have decided yeah. after that that girls shouldn't play uh, yeah. inter school. Well, we'd, we'd all go on the bus together, the boys and the girls, and we played the preliminary to the boys games. We played Seneca Falls, we played Cook Academy, we played Waterloo, Geneva, I mean, you know, all the regular. But then the girls weren't allowed to play, because I remember yeah. it was back in 69 or 70 when we got a Tri-County together and yeah. started the girls playing again. Yeah. Well, we had good times, and I remember, well, Honey Smoker was one of them, and her father used to give us each a quarter before the game. If we won, we could keep it. If we lost, we had to give it back to him. <laughs> Silly little things. Now, you said you didn't graduate from the academy, but nope. you went to Lake Monk? Seminary, Lake Mount Academy. And at that time, I'm not sure it wasn't a good thing that happened because I thought, well, gee, maybe I'm not too swift in the head. So I took everything I could take at, at Lake Bond or Starkey and uh, ended up, I don't know, 89, 90, something like that. And I thought, well, that's all right. So I graduated from there in 40, 35, went to Ithaca College, and studied my first year, made freshman honorary society, and I thought, that's it. So then I had fun the rest of like, three years. I mean, I played, I played semi-professional basketball then with a team, Elsie Smith Corona typewriter, and uh, we'd 
But I, you know, I passed, you know, I don't know, I passed everything, but not with any great <laughs> rewards. <laughs> uh, we are we now? And everybody gets a kick out of it. It was that since the very beginning then of license plates. How did that? How did that come about? Well, my uncle had it when they first came out with the YC numbers. Okay. And then when he died, well, Rose Mallory ran the motor vehicle up there. Mm -hmm. and she said, "I think I can get it for you if you want." And I said, "Sure, mm -hmm. I do." Mm -hmm. So. She got it for me, and then I've had it since '46. Uh -huh. uh -huh. When cars first came, they had license plates, right? When oh, they yeah. first came out. Uh -huh. But did you have driver's licenses in the very beginning? I guess so. I you could get them. I, I think you bought. You went down to a, like a drugstore or something. Yeah, I can't because remember. I just read in the paper today I'm that not they were sure. that. That's how some of these older people had gotten their license, but you did have to. You had to have a license, but you yeah. could buy them without a test. Yeah. Well, I took my... Sort of like a dog license. <laughs> yeah, I was 16 years old, and my father was with me in the back seat, and we were the first in line, and went through the inspector. He said, I'm not going to ask you where you, how you learned to drive or where you learned to drive, but he said, you've passed. Because <laughs> I never... I, well, I'd ride with Dad out in the country, and we'd get out in the country, and he'd say, here, you might as well learn, start learning how to drive. But they watched you do it, or they just said, they want, you took a test? Yes. Yeah, you did yes. take a test yeah. for driving. Did yeah. you have to parallel park and so on? <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just like today, then. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, well, I don't know, I used to drive the trucks for the mill and so on, and my mother taught piano, and everybody wondered why I didn't play the piano, and I said, because every afternoon when I went home from school, somebody was there going, dee 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 <laughs> and same on Saturday. That's how I became down at the mill, you know. She was giving lessons, yeah. so you <laughs> yeah. vacated the spot. Yeah. And, uh, had, uh, oh, I had, we had good times around here, but we never really hurt anyone or, I don't know, once in a while.